Welcome to another Cornerstone Lesson Review. And for this week, our lesson is entitled, No Laughing Matter. Our key text is from Genesis 19 verse 14. And it says, So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. Genesis 19 verse 14 The flashlight section of our lesson says, The Redeemer of the world declares that there are greater sins than that for which Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Those who hear the gospel invitation calling sinners to repentance and heed it not are more guilty before God than were the dwellers of the Vale of Siddim. And still greater sin is theirs who profess to know God and keep his commandments, yet who deny Christ in their character and in their daily life. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 165. What do you think? If a catastrophe was going to happen in your town, rank the following warnings. One being highest, five being lowest. I want my mother and father to be warned. I want my friends to be warned. I want my pets to be warned. I want someone to warn me. I want my city to be warned. Did you know, the names Sodom and Gomorrah were not the original names of the cities God destroyed in Genesis 19. Unfortunately, the real names of Sodom and Gomorrah were not preserved. Sodom was derived from the Hebrew word Sodom, which means burnt. Gomorrah was derived from the Hebrew word Amora, which means a ruined heap. These appear to be place names that were assigned after the disaster and were not their original names. Into the story. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner and now he wants to play judge? We will treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law. Hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. Genesis 19 verses 1 to 14 Out of the story Who are the main actors in this story? What parts of the story are key to understanding it? Underline them. What aspects of the story are new to you? 
place an arrow beside them. Lot hesitates before obeying the angel's command to leave Sodom. Is this true obedience? Explain. What emotions, actions, or adjectives enrich this story? Draw a rectangle around them. Why do you think it is that Lot's sons-in-law didn't believe him? If it is never wise to live close to people who are committing sin, what should Lot have done? Now for the punchlines. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Hebrews 13 verse 2 The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19 verse 34 how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. Psalm 31 verses 19 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12 verse 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Colossians 3 verse 1. As the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did it. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. Joshua 11 verse 15. Further insight, obedience, the service and allegiance of love is the true sign of discipleship. And this is taken from Ellen G. White, Steps to Christ, page 59. Now it's time for the connecting to life or the daily sections of our lesson. Sabbath. Read 2 Chronicles 9 verse 10 and Ezekiel 3 verse 18 and finally Ezekiel 33 verse 9. 2 Chronicles 19 verse 10. In every case that comes before you from your people who live in the cities, whether bloodshed or other concerns of the law, commands, decrees, or regulations, you are to warn them not to sin against the Lord. Otherwise, his wrath will come on you and your people. Do this and you will not sin. Ezekiel 3 verse 18 When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their life, that wicked person will die for their sin and I will hold you accountable for their blood. Ezekiel 33 verse 9 but if you do warn the wicked person to turn away from their ways and they do not do so, they will die for their sins, though you yourself will be saved. In the What Do You Think section of this week's lesson, you had the difficult task of choosing whom you would warn if a disaster was about to happen, and you had to choose the order in which the warning would be given. God takes his warnings very seriously, as we'll find out this week. In each of these scriptures, God gives specific consequences for failing to carry out his warnings. List those consequences below. Sunday. Read Colossians 3 verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Read the Into the Story passage. Few stories in the Bible are quite as scary as this one. There are several turning points in this Bible episode. List some of them below. Two mysterious strangers show up in town. 
Lot invites them to stay at his house and insists that they do. And now you're supposed to list point three and four. When the two strangers indicate that God's destruction is soon to fall on Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot senses the urgency of the moment. Does anyone else in his household get it? List two possible reasons why Lot's wife, children, and other relatives did not feel this sense of urgency to leave Sodom. Are you ready to leave all behind to be saved by God? Monday, read Acts 26 verses 25 to 29. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to become a Christian? Paul replied, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you but all who are listening to me today may become what I am except for these chains. Read this week's key text again. This scripture expresses the sad reality of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah at the time that God destroyed them. How did Lot's sons-in-law respond to his warning about Sodom's destruction? Which of the following best describes their attitude at that time? I don't care. Nothing is going to happen here. Come back tomorrow. You sound so funny with all your God talk, old man. In today's reading, the Apostle Paul would shortly be sentenced to death. But before he was, he preached an awesome sermon. What was King Agrippa's response to Paul's appeal? How do you respond to God's appeal to you? Tuesday, read Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What are some of the sins committed by the people of Sodom and Gomorrah? Several sexual sins come to mind, but they were also guilty of idolatry, witchcraft, and other evil behaviors. Ellen White notes that there is a sin greater than these. Read the flashlight quote. Why is this sin considered greater than those of Sodom and Gomorrah? Wednesday, read Matthew 25 verse 40. The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. One of the few bright spots in the story of Lot, Sodom, and Gomorrah is a theme of hospitality. Do you think Lot knew who his two mysterious guests were when he first invited them to his home? Is it wise today to invite total strangers to your home? In many cultures, the form of hospitality showed by Lot is expected of all people. Read the punchlines for this week and answer the following. How are we supposed to treat the strangers we meet? Who might these strangers be? Can you remember anyone you met or helped who seemed to be an angel sent from God to you? What did Jesus say about helping others in Matthew 25 verse 40? Thursday Read 2 Samuel 11 verses 1 to 5 and 26 and verse 27. 2 Samuel 11 verse 1 to 5 now. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. 
But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent his messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanliness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant. 2 Samuel 11 verse 26 When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. 2 Samuel 11 verse 27 After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house. And she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. One of the powerful themes in the story of Sodom is sexual immorality. The men of the city came to Lot's house to have sex with his guests. Does God love people who commit sexual sin? Read the story found in 2 Samuel 11 verses 1 to 5 and verses 26 to 27. God loves sinners, but he cannot accept our sin. What two things can you do this week to stay sexually pure? Friday, read Romans 12 verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Is there anything in your life separating you from God? In Lot's family, the sight and sounds of Sodom were too much to give up for God. The angels literally had to drag Lot, his wife, and daughters from Sodom. What is preventing you from seeing God? Well, that brings us to the end of our lesson for this week. You are encouraged to read the commentary for this week, taken from Patriarchs and Prophets or the book Beginning of the End, Chapter 14. We look forward to our lively discussion in class on Sabbath. God bless. See you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.